Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven Guildmaster. In the last episode we uh, we liberated Bloodford uh, by taking out a crypt of various undead with the Brute and the Tinkerer. We're going to be continuing with the Brute and the Tinkerer this episode. We've got a couple of new options. We can set a trap and ambush a bunch of bandits or we can destroy this Shade Rest cult. This looks like it's going to be a bit more significant. There's an empowering talisman that comes with it. It's going to unlock Shade Rest. There's Cultists and Cultist Deletes. Living Bones and Living Bones Deletes. I think we're going to go for this because the Brute is very Pierce oriented and knowing that these have innate shield, I think that's where a lot of our value is going to come in with this. The town of Shaderest is in lockdown due to COVID, uh, due to a cult that stalks the streets at night, murdering anyone that defies them. Let's just move on straight from Bloodrest. Oh, an encounter on the route. At a crossroads, you see an ornate wooden shrine with a slot for passing travellers to make offerings of gold in the hope of receiving a blessing. We can't really make a large offering because we don't have the gold for that. We can make a small offering, but it's going to cost us. We can smash the shrine and take the gold, but we'll probably be cursed if we do that. But it will give us gold. And I think this is an important thing to, to recognise. Sometimes the disadvantage of being cursed might be fine if you get the benefit at the end. We are going to need gold for enhancements in the future. So let's be bad guys. The shrine is well made and does not break easily. But it eventually succumbs to your attacks and splits open, spilling coins onto the floor in front of you. You quickly gather up the coins and continue down the path, noticing a sudden chill in the air causes you to shudder. You can't help but wonder whether your dishonorable act perhaps did not go unnoticed. 19 gold! That was worth it! Even if we lose this scenario, that was worth it. You have been cursed. Yeah, that's fine. We expected it. It's just going to make this a bit more difficult. Your contact has informed you that the town of Shade Rest is under the heel of a recently risen cult called the Umbran League. Rumours abound that they have access to forbidden knowledge of necromancy, but any that call them out are swiftly dealt with. You've been directed to a crypt to the east of town and can see signs of sacrifice in the area and unholy sigils painted on the walls. You hear chanting from within and venture downwards. Okay, once again we are picking our battle objectives. Kill five or more monsters? Yeah. Kill three or fewer monsters? Unlikely. Let's go for Sadist. Use your equipped items a number of times equal to your uh, two or greater than your level plus two during this scenario. So we are level one. So we would need to use our goggles three times. Kill one or more elite monsters during the scenario. This seems more likely. We would just need to specifically target the cultist elite or the living bones elite to the tinkerer. Let's go with Hunter. Ah, cultists. They may look relatively harmless at first glance, but you need to eliminate them as soon as possible, as they have the ability to raise the undead. Yes, we must remember to take them out ASAP. That said, if mortally wounded, they can die in the process. Also be aware that due to the powerful energies they're invoking, they sometimes have a tendency to explode when killed. So depending on how volatile they're looking, maybe stand back. Right, so planning phase. We need to kill all enemies in all rooms. It is just a two room area. We have an elite in this room with us. We don't have the elite skeleton in here with us. So this cultist is our primary objective. We could, oh, there's a trap there as well. Potential. We could do the the massive skewer run balanced measure combination and just do an absolute 
butt ton of damage to him in one go. And then follow up with an enhanced reviving shock. It's not going to be fast what we do, but it would likely be effective. Hypothetically, uh, in fact, let's let's reposition. These might move two, one, two, one, two, one, two. He might even summon someone. If he summons someone, it's not going to completely block us off from him. I think this is a good plan. Right. So to summarize, we're going to use skewer to move eight. We're going to use Balance Measure to hit this guy very hard. Then we're going to get the Tinkerer, hopefully, in... Mm, let's move the Tinkerer up forwards, actually. The Tinkerer, who is hopefully still in range, to shoot him with Reviving Shock and maybe shoot another Skeleton at the same time. They have to go around this... So, worst case, the Tinkerer is in range of one skeleton, I think. Yeah, he's gonna... We're gonna move before the Cultist. Amazing. And the Living Bones aren't even gonna move. So. But here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Balance measure. Hopefully we don't kill him in one go. Oh, that curse. It's going to be a little painful. It's fine, though. Uh, in fact, let's undo. So reviving shock is going to be in range of at least two of them. Good, that's what I wanted to check. So we'll get the aura. Now, the, the curses, they are... Uh, I think it's three per person. I don't know if it's possible for us to check the others. Um, but the very... We've burned one of them. We've burned one of them. So let's maximise the amount of damage we can put out on this. we got to kill. we got to kill right away. Could be worth us getting reviving shock straight back actually. Okay, new plan. Provoking Roar will get a disarm on him and we could do a we could do a warding strength actually that's not a bad plan we could also warding strength would allow us to push this guy back and do three damage there which is pretty good so if we do it this way round Spare Dagger allows us to do a little stab. And Warding Strength allows us to push this guy back. We want the Reviving Shock over here, but we want to try and move quickly. Toxic Bolt would burn a card, but it would get us attacking quickly and killing him, which is very good. I don't think I mind burning a card this early on. And it gives us 2 XP. Let's do that. So we're we're going to toxic bolt him. In fact, if we're going to toxic bolt him, then yeah, spare dagger and warding strength end up going straight against this guy. That's fine. He's out of range. He's out of range because I misjudged. 
in that case, let's undo slightly. Reviving shock on both of them. Maybe we'll get lucky and get a double. Oh, plus one. It's not quite. It's kind of not worth it to, to do that. He's only going to attack one for target two, and it's going to be late, by which point we'll have shield. So maybe, maybe we just move in a bit. This is not gone according to plan. We could just kill him and then we'll let the Tinkerer kill the one in the next room. That's also an acceptable plan. Just to make it nice and simple, give him a stab. Push him back that way. Ow! I'll take the three damage because we can heal it, but... That was a little painful. Uh, provoking Roar will give us a big spot of damage on him. And Eye for an Eye will heal us up. Over this side, what are we going to do about these guys? Getting some poison on them would be nice. Restorative Mist will allow us to move around, heal up the remaining damage there. And then Stun Shot just to buy us a little bit more time. What are they going to do? They're going to shield and heal. So there's very little point in doing a lot of damage to them right at this stage. We'll try, of course, because we could get... Uh, something big for the very least we uh we burn through jeez we didn't we didn't even get the uh the curse so the curse is a separate thing in the deck yeah you guys do do your things at the very least we'll we'll stun this guy for next turn Right, he's already stunned. Overwhelming Assault is a lovely card, but I think we'll we'll trample to pierce through him. And after that, we could do Overwhelming Assault to push the other guy around, maybe. On this side, I think probably... Getting a proximity mine right next to us could be could be really good. And if we do net shooter to move across and then do the proximity mine there, hopefully he would move into it. Uh, skip the immobilizing. And we'll try this. I've never used the proximity mine before. But if it's invisible to the enemies, then it is not. That's fine, we can use hook gun next turn or something like that. Or we just push this guy back into it. It almost killed him. We'll uh, skip the movement, but we'll do the push. It's not the most efficient, but it guarantees the XP. Right, Leaping Cleave moves this one, two, three. Shield Bash, we'll just use as a regular attack. 
over here, reinvigorating elixir would give us a little bit of healing and volatile concoction to give you back something. Sure, that feels fine. This thing's going to heal up anyway. Oh, he's a little bit further away than I thought. Okay. Let's undo that. Still want to heal up. But we'll actually just step in and, and grab the gold. And over this side... take a swing it probably won't do anything but hey a little bit of damage let's go for the short rest sure we can use eye for an eye it's not that important for what we're trying to do we want trample and we want to move quickly so provoking roar and trample will do i think over this side we might open up the next room so ink bomb and flames and hook gun. Fingers crossed for the big hit. There we go. All done. Let's step on and grab the gold. Keeps everything all nicely squared away. And in the meantime, let's see what's in the next room. So, we need to kill the elite with the Tinkerer, but we can definitely do some some pulling. Ooh. Yeah, we can definitely do some pulling, but dot dot dot. These guys are not going to really cause any problems. Attack 4, target 3. Yeah, we don't want to be next to him. Let's back up one. That'll still be able to reach him and we can just pull him a bit closer. No damage, but we'll uh, we'll get him next to the door at least. Oh, you actually have to pull him too. Uh, fine, we'll pull him all the way in. It's gonna hurt, but it's gonna be fine. Ow! You know what? <laughs> For that, we're gonna we're gonna burn a card. And I think we're going to burn Hook Gun. Oh, no, sorry. We're going to burn Flamethrower. Because it has to be an available card. Otherwise, it's too discarded. This is fine, though. Right, we need a short rest over here. Ooh, don't like losing Enhancement Field. Let's redraw that. Sure, we'll lose Restorative Mist. How can we do a hell of a lot of damage to this guy and not really worry about him living through the turn? Shield Bash will do four and it will stun him. And anything else would let us move in. So something like Leaping Cleave would get us in there so he's already been hit a lot by this point stepping away and hitting him with an ink bomb would kind of guarantee the hit so would doing something like toxic bolt for the kill
Hell, we could even we could even say toxic bolt and ink bomb and just double down, just to make sure. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. The cultists aren't summoning anything yet, so that's fine. They are moving and attacking one, so they're going to get a little bit closer, but that's actually going to work for us if we bring the fruit in. So let's bring the fruit in. We'll get the shield bash off. <laughs> Gives us a bit of XP. I really, really wanna wanna hit this well. So I kind of feel like we should step away before trying this. Just so we're not at a disadvantage, but we do have two separate attacks. Let's do the toxic bolt first. Got him. So now we can do the ink bomb on one of these, and it is burning another card, but it's extra XP, so... Ooh! Painful, but fine. Oh no! My shield! Ow! That one actually hurt. But that's fine. Okay, let's have a look at the Tinkerer first. Uh, Net Shooter makes a lot of sense, seeing as these two are clustered up quite nicely. Enhancement Field gives that an extra boost. I like it, I like it a lot. Spare Dagger and Warding Strength combined will allow us to push someone back into trouble. And the Cultists are going to summon Living Bones if they live through this. So let's try and make sure they don't. Rotate that round. Hit both of them. It's good solid damage. We need a bit more though. So we're going to stab you. Oh no. Well he's going to kill himself so. It's not going to be the worst thing. At least we don't need to worry about infinitely more after this. Uh, let's move slowly and do what we can. And over here, I think stun shot and reinvigorating elixir makes a lot of sense. Oh, we'd really need to be right next to him to do that. Let's um, let's take volatile concoction instead. Okay, it's doing plink plink damage, so not a huge amount. We can definitely help out. Let's uh, hit this guy. This is why we want to uh, get the consistency by reducing those minus ones. Uh, give you back a new card. I think provoking roar or maybe leaping cleave. Oh, trample actually. Although you're using both of these, this was not a smart move. I should have just moved in a bit closer. So what do we not want to lose? Let's take trample. Because we're going to do a short rest next turn. A little bit painful, but it's fine. Also means we can't do that push that I was uh, hoping for, at least not effectively. We could just go for the maximum XP. Do an overwhelming assault on you. There's two there, two there, two there. Let's do an overwhelming assault on you. Oh, I didn't get him. Sad times.
Why is it not letting me... Hmm. We seem to have a minor issue. Alright, give me a moment. We'll try and figure this out. Might need to restart the... Uh, the round in order to, to replay that. Okay, uh, give me just a moment. All right, I've had to replay the round, so... We're going to do what we did previously, except this time it is a slightly different random chance. Hasn't killed the guy. Uh, so, we're going to move over here and just start getting some of the gold. Uh, this is going to be a short rest. Uh, sure, we can we can lose provoking more. We'll go for spare dagger. That's going to allow us to start attacking quickly, and some trample, which is going to allow us to do some piercing. Uh, we want to get reviving shock and probably hook gun. Actually, try and get as much looting as possible. Maybe even do this late. It hurts, but it's fine. Ow, it hurts, but it's fine. The healing is less fine. Pretty good trample. Let's hope for... Oh, the shield is so annoying. Uh, let's drink our healing potion. This is why we brought it along, of course. And I think... We want to hit these as hopefully as possible. Such bad luck. There's no point in us doing any looting with that, so let's skip the movement. And uh, actually, yeah, with, with warding strength, we'll be able to move in. Leave and Cleaver let us attack both of these. Uh, let's do a short rest. We'll try and save Hook Gun if we can. We'll go for another Reviving Shock and Hook Gun. Mostly so we can try and get as much uh, loot out of these as possible. So we want to step in here and leap and cleave both of them. Fingers crossed. Well, one dead. It's better than nothing. It's a shame he was a, a summon. And rather than attack to range three with disadvantage, let's just use the basic attack for still attack two, but without the disadvantage. Hey! And actually with four gold there, we will use hook gun just for the XP. That brings it to a close. This branch of the cult is no more, but they're still active in other parts of the realm. This won't be the last you'll see of them. Tinkerer got pretty much all of the gold on that, but both of them managed to achieve their objectives. And uh, we got eight XP from the ability usage on the Tinkerer, which is really good for us what we want to be doing. We want to be pushing them forwards to the next level. That gave us the empowering talisman design, uh, which is it's going to be useful at some point. A bit of extra XP, and we've unlocked Shade Rest. I've done a deal with a local trinket maker to make some interesting talismans. Come and have a look. You might find them useful. And indeed, we might, just not specifically on these characters. Mostly because we don't have um, consumable items that we would want to refresh right this second. Brute's XP is up to 34. Tinkerers is up to 24. They're getting very close to levelling up. And we've got 66 gold, which is really nice. We have a brand new section down here, the Hounds of Despair, which requires the Cragheart to be there. 
Well, that's interesting. So I guess that means next time we'll be moving on to setting a trap. Uh, but that is going to be next time. Thank you very much for coming along, everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed this. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Gloomhaven. See you soon. <laughs>